Hey guys, ECRG here, back with another video. Today we're going to be talking about what is an annotated report in clinical research. Hey guys, ECRG here, back with another video. This might be a short video today. Today we're going to be talking about what is an annotated report in clinical research. Now for you guys interested in the monitoring aspect, the clinical aspect of clinical research, this is something that is very, very important. But before we go ahead and get into that, I'm going to talk to you guys about the resume review program we have going on right now. This is a program where if you are new to clinical research, looking to make a transition within the industry, or looking to get in the industry for the first time, we do offer a resume review program where we review your resume, we offer pointers, we offer tips, we offer interview tips, and we structurally change how your resume looks to fit best into the clinical research landscape and the clinical research industry. This will drastically improve your chances to get a job in the clinical research industry. So if you're interested in that, email us, eliteclinicalgroup at gmail.com. Now back to the annotated report. The annotated report is a document or an outline of how a monitoring visit or monitoring call should go. And it has all of the bullet points that a monitor is gonna to wanna to hit during the visit. So that is an annotated report. I'm gonna deconstruct one a little bit later where we go into a little bit more detail on the different things, the different questions you might ask. But it is, a, it is basically a list of things that you wanna hit. So you wanna talk about subject recruitment. You wanna talk about um, you know, randomization, how the randomization process is going. You wanna talk about informed consent. You wanna talk about um, training of the site staff. Have they all done their training? So there's gonna be a, a huge list of things that are on the annotated report that a monitor is gonna get when they're new to the study uh, by the CTL, the clinical trial lead. And they're gonna be given this document to make sure that they hit all of the things that the sponsor wants them to hit and the study team wants them to hit during their monitoring visit. And they wanna make sure that's covered throughout the duration of the study, throughout the duration of the visit. And it's really important because you want to make sure that when your monitor goes on site or your monitor is calling the site for a monitoring call that everything is covered and that they do a thorough visit because a lot of times they're not going to be seeing the site for at least another six to eight weeks if they're talking about going on site or if they're a remote monitor or in-house CRA. These visits typically happen once a month, maybe once every six weeks, depending on what the sponsor wants and the sponsor's obligation for that. So. It really just depends, but every time you do a visit, you want to make sure you're as thorough as possible to ensure that the data is being monitored correctly and everything is being monitored correctly so that by the time an audit happens or if an audit happens by the FDA, you know, all the T's are crossed and the I's are dotted when it comes to the clinical study. So typically the clinical trial lead or the lead CRA is the one who comes up with an annotated report and they may do it in conjunction with the project manager and obviously in conjunction with the sponsor's team because they're the ones paying for the trial and they're the ones who are probably going to be overseeing uh, the monitoring aspect because that is one of the most important aspects of the trial. They wanna make sure that at every visit, whatever they need covered is gonna be covered. So they're typically gonna be looped in and involved in that process as well. And this is gonna happen you know, before monitors come on to the study. So pretty early in the process of a clinical trial, they're gonna start working on this. And, you know, it's, it's a really good form. It is something that, you know, I use as the basis for my monitoring visits. And then obviously, you, as you go through the trial, there's gonna be other questions that pop up throughout. And obviously this, this is, a, you know, kind of a living, breathing document. As the protocol gets updated, there are gonna be more questions you need to ask or this, can, this document can be amended throughout the study depending on what needs to be changed or added to the annotated report. But it's kind of a misnomer because it's not necessarily a report, but it's basically a template for the monitoring visit report. That's why it's called an annotated report. It's, a, it's essentially a template for the monitoring visit report. So, you know, there's a lot of information on there. They're pretty, 
you know, they, it's pretty high level, just, just a, basically a template or a scaffold for how a visit should go and all the topics that should be discussed. So hope that helps. Uh, comment down below if there are any questions with annotated report or dealing with annotated visit reports. And email us at eliteclinicalgroup at gmail.com for any inquiries you may have. Resume review program, hit us up there. As always, guys, uh, follow us on the podcast. Subscribe to this channel. Like this video. Share this video. Watch it a few times if, if you're a little bit confused about annotated visit reports. And comment down below. Any questions or you thought there was a good job here, comment down below, guys. Take care.